Buksan po natin ang ating Biblia sa Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Well, this passage is common among Reformed churches, particularly Reformed Baptist churches. But it is less common and it is less popular in Pentecostal, full gospel, charismatic churches. And the implication is quite telling as to why this is not popular among full gospel churches. They, say, they call themselves full gospel or Pentecostal or charismatic and even among mainstream evangelical Christians or churches. But this should be popular among all the people of God. And that is why we give so much emphasis to this. Because the Bible is very clear about it. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, ang sinabi po dito, Pagsikapan ninyong magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa lahat at ng kabanalan na kung wala nito'y walang sino mang makakakita sa Panginoon. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of His Word. And I suppose, and I am sure that you have heard many times from me or from other Reformed preachers, the phrase gospel holiness or evangelical holiness or experimental holiness. I use that interchangeably, uh, interchangeably dito sa pulpitong ito. But most especially the term gospel holiness. And perhaps you may wonder kung bakit tinatawag natin itong gospel holiness. Bakit hindi natin ginagamit merely ang salitang holiness. Well, it is simply because meron pong confusion or pagkalito sa ating kapanahunan patungkol sa tunay na kabanalan at peke na kabanalan. Kaya ang mga reform preachers ay intentional na ginagamit itong phrase na gospel holiness. Ito ay sa kadahilanan na ang kabanala na ito ay resulta o bunga ng ating tinatawag na saving attachment to Jesus Christ. Kung tayo ay merong attachment to Christ, meron talagang Kabanalan. Well, merong limang rason ng ating pag-aaralan ngayong hapong ito, but I don't think we could finish the five reasons as to why holiness is necessary. But let us seek to finish as many as we could. Five reasons as to why holiness is necessary. It's not an option. It's a must for all of the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pero bago natin talakayin ang limang rason na ito kung bakit ang kabanalan ay mahalaga, vital, necessary, essential sa buhay Kristiyano, gusto ko lang pong linawin ito sa pamamagitan ng isang kakaunting disclaimer. Hindi po natin purpose at hindi po natin intention na i-discourage natin ang mga mananampalataya. Hindi natin intensyon na i-discourage natin ang, at, ang, ang mga kapatiran natin sa Panginoon sapagkat naniniwala po ako that in one way or another, tayo po ay minsanang nahulog sa depression, nahulog sa compromises, nahulog sa pagkakasala kahit tayo ay mga niligtas na ng ating Panginoon. And thus, it is not my purpose to discourage any believer and to utter words of condemnation sa bawat isa. Napakadali pong gawin po iyan. To preach about holiness and to discourage the listeners about themselves. Napakadaling gawin po iyan. The preacher must be insensitive if that is the case. Kailangan lang maging holier than thou ang preacher. 
If that is the case, it's so easy to discourage the congregation when holiness is the topic. But this is not meant to discourage anybody. What is the purpose here is to challenge every Christian. I-challenge ang bawat mananampalataya upang magkaroon tayo ng biblical-based conviction concerning the absolute necessity and importance of pursuing, habulin ang kabanalan, pursuing a distinctly Christian or gospel holiness. That is our intention. And I am reminded of a passage in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, that if someone is caught in transgression, could you just, could you just please uh, turn your Bibles to that passage of the Scriptures? Ang sabi po ng Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, hindi natin ito tolerate, but as we deal with brethren na, na caught sa kasalanan, ay dapat ito po ang ating attitude. Mga kapatid, kung ang isang tao ay natagpuan sa anumang pagsuway, kayong mga espiritual ay dapat panunumbalikin siya sa espiritu ng kaamuan. Tingnan ang inyong sarili, baka ikaw ay matukso rin. It's a very clear passage in the scriptures. When we deal with brethren who have fallen into sin, who have fallen into compromises, who have jeopardized the testimony of their being disciples in the Lord Jesus Christ, the easiest thing to do is to discourage the person and to easily condemn the person as if recovery is no longer possible, restoration is no longer possible. But this is a very sensitive matter. When we preach holiness, when we preach restoration, let us do it in the spirit of gentleness. Kaya tayo po ay manalangin at hilingin po natin ang tulong ng ating Panginoon. Let us pray. Oh, help us, oh dear Lord. We are weak, but you are mighty. Hold us with your powerful hand. We shall be doing, uh, dealing with a very sensitive but a very necessary matter of our Christian life, which is gospel holiness. Help us, O oh God, to have a biblical view of holiness, gospel holiness. Tulungan ninyo ang inyong lingkod sa hapong ito. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I told you, meron pong limang rason kung bakit absolutely necessary ang kabanalan. Hindi po ito option. Lahat ng merong saving attachment ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay nagbubunga ng kabanalan sa kanilang buhay. Malinaw po ang salita ng Panginoon dyan. Ang mabuting puno ay nagbubunga ng mabuting bunga at ang masamang puno ay nagbubunga ng masamang bunga. Now, ang unang rason Bakit absolutely necessary ang holiness, ang kabanalan, ay malinaw po sa ating teksto. Holiness is necessary for entrance into heaven. Holiness is necessary for entrance into heaven. Please turn once again, uh, uh, once again to our text. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Ang sabi po dito, Pagsikapan ninyong magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa lahat at ng kabanala na kung wala nito'y walang sino mang makakakita sa Panginoon. It's a very categorical statement but let me clarify it my dear brethren. Nobody goes to heaven because of their holiness. Walang makakapasok sa langit dahil sa kanilang kabanalan. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 12, there is no one righteous. No, not even one. Walang matuwid, wala, wala, kahit isa. So malinaw po yun. Nobody goes to heaven because of their holiness. But nobody goes to heaven without holiness. Ulitin po. 
Nobody goes to heaven because of their holiness. Simply because there is no one righteous. No, not even one. But nobody goes to heaven without holiness. Well, we will examine two texts. At binasa na po natin ang Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Ang sabi po dito, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Pero bago natin i-clarify itong, uh, i-explain itong pinakahuling phrase or pinakahuling clause, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Merong dalawang bagay ang pinapagawa sa atin ng tekstong ito. Ano ang pinapagawa sa atin ng Hebrews 12.14? Habulin daw natin ang kapayapaan sa lahat ng mga tao. Pursue peace with all people. Habulin natin ang kapayapaan. Habulin din natin ang kabanalan. And by implication, kailangang i-pursue natin. The word pursue, anong ibig sabihin ng habulin or pursue? It means to run or to chase after. Habulin natin. We are to chase or run after two things, dalawang bagay. Peace with all people and holiness. Ibig sabihin, peace with man and holiness with God. Yun ang habulin natin. Dalawang bagay, kapayapaan, pakikipagkapayapaan sa kapwa-tao at pamumuhay ng may kabanalan sa harapan ng Panginoon. Now, the word holiness from the Greek language, it literally means consecration. Consecration. And it refers to the sanctification or process of being made holy. Ang allusion po nito, ang type and shadow ay ang mga utensils sa Old Testament temple or Old Testament tabernacle, lahat ay i-consecrate by blood. Lahat ng paraphernalia doon sa temple ay kailangan dumaan ng consecration. Lahat ng mga maglilingkod sa templo bilang mga pare at mga levita ay dadaan ng consecration. Now in this context, Consecration refers to our sanctification or process of being made holy, pagpapabanal. Now, let me remind you about the distinction between imputed righteousness and imparted righteousness. Ang imputed righteousness, yun po yung justification. Hindi na kailangang habuli natin yun. Dahil Tapos na, ginawa na yun ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Ang kanyang perfect obedience, ang kanyang perfect sacrifice by blood doon sa cross ng Kalbaryo, kung ikaw ay nanampalataya kay Kristo, itinuring yun na sa iyo, imputed righteousness. And that is why in the sight of God, lahat ng mananampalataya ay tinuturing na banal, justified. Imputed righteousness ang tawag noon. Yun ang basis ng ating justification. Hindi mo na kailangang habulin yun dahil si Kristo na ang gumawa noon 100%. Nakuha po natin? It's a finished transaction. It is finished. Ang imparted righteousness, so nakuha ninyo yung dalawang terminology, imputed righteousness versus imparted righteousness. Ang imparted righteousness or holiness, ito po yung renewal ng ating kaluluwa at nag-uumpisa po ito sa regeneration. Meron na tayong bagong puso. At ang perfection ng imparted righteousness ay makakamta natin sa glorification. Pero yung imparted righteousness, hindi imputed. Kasi sa harap, harap ng Panginoon, talagang 100% holy na ang lahat ng mga tinubos niya. It's already a done deal, done transaction. But the realization in actual, yun yung imparted holiness, nag-uumpisa po yun sa regeneration, bagong kapanganakan, palago ng palago, yun ang dapat na trend ng ating uh, kabanalan hanggang sa magiging ganap ito sa glorification. Now with regards to imputed righteousness, 
ang ating justification, pagpapawalang sala sa harapan ng Panginoon. Ito po yung once and for all declaration sa bawat mananampalataya na tayo ay itinuring na namatuwid sa harapan ng Panginoon. Tulad ng sinabi ko, lilinawin natin pa ulit-ulit, hindi na kailangang habuli natin ang justification sapagat in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are already perfectly justified before God. Pero ang mga mananampalataya ay may katungkulan. May katungkulan na habuli natin ang practical holiness, imparted righteousness, or personal holiness. Meron tayong katungkulan na habuli natin ang actual, practical na kabanalan ng ating buhay. Pakinggan po natin ang pagpapaliwanag ni Arthur Pink sa passage na ito. Sabi ni Arthur Pink, The holiness referred to in our text is not imputed holiness. For we cannot be exhorted to follow after that. Hindi natin pwedeng habulin ang imputed holiness. And the Bible doesn't give us the exhortation. No, sabi ni Arthur Pink, it is personal and practical holiness which is not attained by standing still. Hindi natin makakamtan ang personal or practical holiness by standing still. Kailangan nating habulin. Makakamta natin ito sa pamamagitan ng earnest, diligent, persistent pursuit after practical holiness. Now, ang tanong, bakit po kailangan gawin natin ito? Bakit kailangan habulin natin ang kabanalan? Ang sagot ay binigay ng ating teksto sa Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Kung walang kabanalan, kung wala nito'y, walang makakakita sa Panginoon. And that, that means the beatific vision of who God is. Uh, yung salitang see the Lord, parirala sa Tagalog, or phrase sa English. Ginagamit ito kadalasan sa scripture at tumutukoy ito sa glorious sight ng Panginoon sa langit. Kaya nga sa Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, please turn there. This is the second text na ating uh, parallel text na galing mismo sa bibig ng ating Panginoon. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, ang sabi dito, mapapalad ang mga may malinis na puso sapagkat makikita nila ang Diyos. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, Richard Phillips, pakinggan natin. Ang sabi ni Phillips, Holiness is necessary for us to be saved. It is not necessary as a condition of our acceptance with God. Holiness is not necessary of our condition upang ma-justify tayo at upang tanggapin tayo ng Diyos since we are justified by faith in Christ alone. Hiwalay sa gawa, according to Philips. But it is necessary as a consequence of our acceptance with God. Kung tayo ay tinanggap na ng Diyos, what is after that? What is the consequence? Holiness. So it is not a condition of our acceptance with God, but it is a consequence of our acceptance with God. That's according to Richard Phillips, and I 100% agree. Please turn to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Ito po yung picture ng Biblia na kailangan nating tahakin sa ating pag-chase after or paghabol ng kabanalan. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Ang sabi po dito, narrow gate versus wide road. Pumasok kayo sa makipot na pintuan sapagkat maluwang ang pintuan 
at malapad ang daang patungo sa kapahamakan at marami ang pumapasok doon sapagkat makipot ang pintuan at masikip ang daang patungo sa buhay at kakaunti ang nakakatagpo niyon. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng broad gate and way? Now, I got it from Brother Lorenzo. Pagsikapan daw. Sinabi ba dito? Strive in English to enter into the narrow gate. Pagsikapan. Ibig sabihin, there is really a, a, an effort. There is really an effort. In the book of Hebrews, habulin daw. In the book of Matthew, strive to enter the, the narrow gate. Now, ano bang ibig sabihin ng broad gate or broad way? Well, lahat po ng commentators ay nagkakasundo. The broad gate and way refers to the profession of religion that brings with it no demands for repentance and pursuit of holiness. Ang broad gate, ito daw po yung profession of religion na easy lang. Walang hinihinging repentance and pursuit of holiness. At marami pong religion na ganyan. Very easy religion. You can still go on in your sin and you can still be a good member of the church. A popular member of the church. It's very easy. They have the profession of religion, but there is no demand for repentance and pursuit of holiness. And that is the broad gate and way. A very easy way. Now, in contrast to that, ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon, pagsikapan nating pumasok sa makipot na pintuan at lumakad tayo sa makipot na daan, it is the narrow gate and way. Ibig sabihin, every professing Christian, lahat ng professing Christian dito sa church, we are here and we profess our faith in Christ. But in reality, every professing Christian in this church is either traveling in one of the two paths. One is broad and easy. And the other is narrow and difficult. This is really the test of discipleship. This is really the test of discipleship. If you have to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a demand for you to deny yourself daily. Take up your cross and follow me. You know the, the rich young man? I have done all of those things since my youth up. Ah, there is one thing that you lack, sabi ng ating Panginoon. You sell everything that you have. Distribute it to the poor and follow me. Deny yourself and follow me at uh, dinugtong ng ating Panginoon. If anyone wishes to become my disciple, he must deny himself daily. Take up his cross and follow me. There is this demand. There is this demand of detaching yourself from unequal yoking if you have such kind of relationship. Remember that you do not cease to become worshippers. You do not cease to become a servant. If you are not serving God, then you are serving yourself. You are ser if, if God is not your master, then you set yourself as your master. And eventually you set Satan as your master. Because if the, the dictate of yourself is contrary to God, then it comes from Satan. And that means even a simple unequal yoking with the unbeliever must be, must, must be denied if we are to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the narrow way. It's not an easy religion. It's not an easy Christianity. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. You do not cease to become a worshiper. You are wired for worship. In, kung hindi ka sumasamba sa tunay na Diyos, the question is not whether sasamba ka or hindi. The question is, sino ang sinasamba mo? Because if it is not God, then it is the idol of your heart. 
And your boyfriend or girlfriend could be the idol of your heart. If that is the hindrance as to why you cannot obey the Lord, as to why you cannot submit to the Lordship of God. If it is money that is the idol of your heart, your status in the society, your prestige in the society, that is the idol of your heart. And that must, must be forsaken altogether if we are to become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is how to walk in the narrow gate and narrow way. So every professing Christian in this church and in all churches are either traveling in the broad way or narrow way. One is broad and easy and the other is narrow and difficult. Ang bawat tao na pumasok at lumalakad sa makipot na daan, sila yung nakakaranas ng tunay na conversion. Sila yung lumalakad sa makipot at mahirap na daan. And this way is narrow because it's defined by the standards or commandments of God. Ang standard ng narrow gate na ito ay ang utos ng Panginoon mismo. Be not unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Forsake all lyings and disputings and bitterness and hatred in your heart. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. The standard is the commandment of God, the moral law of God, and that makes it really very difficult. On the contrary, the road that leads to destruction is broad and easy because the standard is the self-righteousness and the flatteries of the world. Now in our PhD classes, sa usaping LPG, I mean LGBT issue, ay talagang dinadagdagan nila ng ano eh, dinadagdagan nila ng LGBTQ. Meron na namang isang letra, ano yung Q, queer daw, ano? banana Q na yan. Tapos meron pang mga IRRI, binasa ng aking kaklase. Sino ba ang nag-coin ng mga terminology na yan? IRRI, IRI, nandun yan sa UP Los Banyos, gumagawa yan ng bigas. Uh, tapos meron pa daw tinatawag na metrosexual. Ano na naman yung metrosexual na yan? Sila daw yung mga lalaking malinis na malinis. Hindi sila bakla pero malinis na malinis. Metrosexual. At lahat ay nagsisipagtinginan sa akin. Sabi ko, what's happening to you people? Tinatawanan ko na lang sila. It's not a sexual orientation, it's a grooming orientation. What's the matter with you? Why do you call that as metrosexual if someone is really properly groomed? That is metrosexual. You are out of your mind. Tinatawanan ko na lang sila, eh, you cannot insist your religion. You cannot insist your religion dahil ang tawag po noon ay bigotry and coerciveness. I-accuse ko niyan. Pero tinatawanan ko na lang sila. That is the philosophy of the world. That is the standard of the world. Now, there was a high-ranking official in a certain academic institution that she had to resign dahil naging sila noong beauty queen sa prestigious institution na yan. Naging sila. Puro babae ha. At ang aking mga kaklase ay koros talagang nagsasabing, ah, love wins. Love wins. Nagwagi ng pag-ibig. Ang sabi ko, perversion wins. You have to call it as it is. Oh, that is why it is broad and easy because the standard is the depraved philosophy of the world. And following the narrow gate that leads to eternal life is really narrow because the standard is difficult. And not easy because the standard is the commandment of God. We are face to face with the commandment of God. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. Ang sabi po ng Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8, At magkakaroon doon ng lansangang... Ah, at magkakaroon doon ng lansangan isang daanan. At ito'y tatawaging 
ang daan ng kabanalan. Ang marumi ay hindi daraan doon. Ngunit ito'y para sa Kanya na lumalakad sa daang iyon. At ang mga hangal ay hindi maliligaw roon. And you see someone who has spent his life in in lasciviousness and in in debauchery. One day he happened to be in the company of believing people of God, in the company of men who literally held the Bible, literally with their hands. And that person has become so much uncomfortable. And we see it in his eyes. He was there in the group, literally circle of Bible study. But his eyes is worried, talagang worried, baka merong kaibigan niyang dumaan at pagtatawanan siya. Ito yung sinasabi ng Isaiah 35 verse 8. Ang taong hangal ay hindi maliligaw sa daan ng kabanalan. At ang taong hangal ay hindi talaga dadaan sa daan ng kabanalan. Napakinggan natin si Arthur Pink once again. Unless we are made partakers of the divine nature, unless there is personal devotedness to God, unless there is an earnest striving after conformity to His will, then heaven will never be reached. There is only one route. Meron lamang isang rota which leads to the country of everlasting bliss. And by the way, route and route ay variant pronunciation lang po yan. Isa lang po ang ruta, sabi ni Arthur Pink. And that is the highway of holiness. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. Professing believer, professing Christian, kaibigan, whoever you are. Even though you profess Christ with your mouth. But the question remains the same. Are you walking in the route of holiness that leads to eternal life? Isa lamang po ang ruta na kailangang daanan ng mga tao ng Diyos. Hindi maliligaw ang mga tao ng mundo doon. Unless by grace we tread the same, our course must inevitably terminate in the caverns of eternal woe. Uh, that is an old English by Arthur Pink. Ibig sabihin, maliba na lang na pareho tayo ng daan na dinadaanan which is the highway of holiness maliban na lang na pareho tayo ng daan na dinadaanan according to Arthur Pink ay hindi mangyaring makakarating ka sa destination ng kaharian ng Diyos ang destination mo necessarily ay eternal woe according to Arthur Pink lahat ng papuntang langit ay nagmamayari ng kabanalan. Merong kabanalan. That is, they are presently on the highway of holiness. Hi, dalawang highway. Huwag nating isipin ang highway na ito. Katalasan kasi sa Pilipinas, ang highway ay, ay malapad eh. Aginaldo Highway, malapad. Hindi natin tinatawag na highway ang ano, two lane lang dito sa Pilipinas. Ewan ko lang sa ibang lugar. Pero ang highway dito sa Pilipinas ay malapad talaga na daan. Kaya nga meron tayong Aguinaldo Highway. Malapad na daan. Mas lalong pinapalapad kasi highway. Pero tinatawag itong Highway of Holiness, huwag niyong isipin na Aguinaldo Highway yan ha. Talagang makipot yan. Makipot. He is presently walking in the Highway of Holiness. And this is in part of what a Christian is. He or she is a person na kasalukuyang lumalakad sa makipot na daan ng kabanalan. Now, hindi ibig sabihin na lahat ng mga Christians ay pare-pareho ang degree ng kabanalan. I'm not saying that. That's why I told you this is not meant to discourage anyone. Hindi ibig sabihin na pare-pareho ang degree ng ating kabanalan. 
or meron tayong the same stage of holiness, hindi yan ang ibig sabihin. But it means that all Christians, bawat mananampalataya, ay lumalakad sa iisang daan. And it's the only way to heaven. At bawat lahat ng papuntang langit ay kumahabol sa kabanalan. And that is they are really striving after holiness. Ninanais nila sigaw ng kanilang puso ang kabanalan. That is the cry of their heart. They are longing for it. Thus, meron talagang definite connection between what Christians now and what Christians will be in heaven. What are we going to be in heaven? We are going to be 100% glorified. We shall be set free from sin at last. That will take place in heaven. But there is a connection between what we will be and what we are now. We are now presently walking in the highway of holiness. Now this doesn't deny the fact na merong pagbabago ang ating glorification. Meron talagang pagbabago. Meron talagang pagbabago. Kasi doon 100% holy na tayo. But we are not changed from what we fundamentally are in this life. Nabago lang in a sense na there is no more stain of even a single dot of sin. Pero hindi yung nabago na masama tayo dito at lumalakad tayo papuntang langit at bigla tayong nag-glorified. No, 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 no. Meron kung lumalakad tayo sa daan ng kasalanan, ibig sabihin, hindi yan ang ruta papuntang langit. Ruta yan papuntang impyerno. Revelations chapter 22 verse 11. The passage of the scriptures is very clear. Revelations chapter 22 verse 11. Ang sabi po dito, Ang, masasam, ang masama ay hayaang magpakasama pa at ang marumi ay hayaang magpakarumi pa at ang matuwid ay hayaang maging matuwid pa at ang banal ay hayaang magpakabanal pa. Ito'y malapit ng bumalik, sabi ng ating Panginoon. And those who die loving and pursuing holiness will be holy for all eternity. Hindi ko alam kung kanya, ah, kay J.C. Ryle pala ito. Sinabi ni J.C. Ryle, hindi daw niya ma-imagine kung ang isang wicked man, unconverted man, ay papasok sa langit. Miserably daw ang isang unconverted man na papasok sa langit. Dahil, ano na kayang mararamdaman ng isang unconverted man, no? Na umiibig sa kasalanan at papasok siya sa langit at mapupunta siya doon? Wala nang ang pleasure sa langit ay iba sa pleasures ng mundo? Ang panlasa ng langit ay iba sa panlasa ng mundo? Ang karakter ng langit ay iba sa karakter ng mundo? Sabi ni J.C. Ryle, how could that person possibly be happy in heaven kung hindi siya banal dito sa lupa? And thus, we establish the fact. Why is holiness absolutely necessary? It's because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Now, Isang punto lamang pala ang ating kailangang talakayin ngayong hapong ito. But let us meditate about the primary reason that we have heard so far. Try to ponder upon the two routes leading to our eternal destinies. Hindi po dalawa ang ruta. Kaya nga si Oprah, sinasabi ni Oprah, I am a Christian and I also know that Christianity is not the only way to God. She is blind. Here is someone who professes that she is a Christian. And she claims on national television that she is a Christian. But in her interviews, she also knows that Christianity is not the only way to God. There are many ways to God. She is blind. She is blind. It's possible to be deluded. Isa lang ang rota 
papuntang langit. And that is the highway of holiness. Sa ang ruta ka lumalakad kay Bigan. I'm looking at you one by one. Sa ang ruta ka lumalakad. Sa ruta ng kabanalan or ruta ng kasalaan, kasalanan. Kaya ginakausap po ng message na ito ang mga professing Christians. Mga professing Christians na walang kaalam-alam sa gospel holiness. And by the way, opera is directing X-rated movies if you don't know about it. And she claims that she is a Christian but she is a pre producer of sensual movies if you don't know about it. If you know nothing about gospel holiness, then there is only one explanation. You are not walking in the highway of holiness and therefore the end of it is not, is not heaven, but the end of it is eternal destruction. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Could there be any clearer passage than 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9? Where are these people headed to if they are practicing what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 describes? Ang sabi po dito, hindi ba ninyo nalalaman na ang mga masasamang tao ay hindi magmamana ng kaharian ng Diyos, huwag kayong padaya. Ang mga mapakiapid, mga sumasamba ng Diyos, Diyosan, mga mga ngalunya, mga binabae, mga nakikiapid sa kapwa lalaki, mga magnanakaw, masasakim, mga maglalasing, mga mag mapagmura, o ang mga manggagantso ay hindi magmamana ng kaharian ng Diyos. Would there be any clearer statement than that? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 describes the highway of depravity. It's opposite to the highway of holiness. The highway of holiness is Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and following. Love, joy, gentleness, patience, long-suffering, kindness. That's the highway of holiness. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 is describing the highway of depravity. 1 John chapter 3 verse 7. Here is another clear passage. Categorical passage. In order to remove all kinds of presumptions. 1 John chapter 5 at uh, chapter 3 verse 7. Ang sabi po dito, mga munting anak, huwag kayong padaya kanino man. Ibig sabihin ang antinomianism and daraya. Ang antinomianism, mandaraya. You can be a Christian even if you do not obey the law because we are no longer under law but under grace, mandaraya. Mga munting anak, huwag kayong padaya kanino man. Ang gumagawa ng katuwiran ay matuwid. Gaya niya na matuwid. And of course, if we will read Revelations 21-27, Ang sabi po dito, Revelations 21, 27, At hindi makakapasok doon ang anumang bagay na marumi o ang sino mang gumagawa ng karumaldumal o ng kasinungalingan, kundi sila lamang na nakasulat sa aklat ng buhay ng kordero. The passage is very clear. Again, Now, my friend, kung ikaw ay professing Christian, but you know nothing about gospel holiness, what you need is not to pursue practical holiness. Holiness, You need to abandon your self-righteousness. You need to abandon your supposed holiness. Ang kailangan mo is what we all need. You need Christ. You need justification. Dahil sa pamamagitan lamang ni Kristo, ay masusumpungan mo ang lahat ng practical holiness na kailangan mo. But do not pursue practical holiness. If you do not know anything about gospel holiness, you are a professing Christian, lumaki ka sa church, pero wala sa iyo yung gospel holiness, hindi ka pa Christian. Huwag mo munang habulin ang practical holiness. Kailangan mo munang lumapit kay Kristo. You need to be justified. You need Christ in your life. Because if you have Christ, you have everything, including gospel holiness. In Christ, you find holiness or righteousness para sa justification mo pag-aaring ganap. 
Pero nakai Kristo din masusumpungan ang practical holiness para sa iyong sanctification. And finally, at this is where we will end. Salamat sa Panginoon. Naka isang punto lang tayo ngayon. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. Ang sinasabi ng Biblia. Subalit kayo ay nakai Kristo, Jesus, na naging karunungan para sa atin mula sa Diyos. At katuwiran, justification, at kabanalan, at katubusan. Now we say hallelujah to that. Praise God. The salvation that Jesus Christ offers is a complete salvation, salvation to the uttermost. You see, we have justification, we have sanctification, we have redemption. Kaya nga ang challenge sa bawat isa is, come to the Savior, do not delay. Come to the Savior, do not delay. Huwag mo nang ipagpabukas pa. All that you need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everything. May the Lord give you a resolute heart and mind to submit to the Lordship of Christ. To surrender yourself to Christ. Hindi po malupit na amo ang ating Panginoon. I have been very frank to everybody about it. Kahit sa aking mga isdyante na professing Christian, pero may mga girlfriend na hindi mananampalataya, professing Christian, lumalapit sa akin, eh, Christian daw sila. Ang unang tanong ko, may girlfriend ka na ba? Christian ba ang girlfriend mo? Ah, nagdududa ako sa iyo. Dinidiretso ko yung mga isdyante ko. Pastor, ang sakit-sakit eh. Mas masakit kung wala si Jesus. Mas masakit kung itakwil ka ni Jesus. Yung pag-ibig mong kinakabag ay panandalian lang po ang sakit niyan. Kung ikaw ay makikipaghiwalay sa kasintahan mong hindi mananampalataya. That is only a temporary loss. And it's not a loss actually. It is a gain. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Don't you know that to become friends with the world is to become enemies with God? It's not a loss. It's a gain. It's a loss of your infatuation. Misguided affection. But it's gain. At kabilang yan sa sinasabi ni Paul na rubbish. I counted all of my achievements as rubbish. Dung. Refuse. For the sake of having Christ. Now certainly your girlfriend or boyfriend is, not, is nothing in compare with the achievements of the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul even gave up his right to take for himself a believing wife just for the sake of being concentrated in the ministry. You see, we want to direct your mind towards the Lord Jesus Christ. He is everything that you need. Hindi siya malupit na amo. It just takes an undivided decision to follow Him no matter what. He is the King. And all of his people must bow down to him and follow him. Tayo po ay manalangin. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa hapong ito. There is only one way to, to eternal life, and that is the highway of holiness. Naway walang sino man sa amin, O Diyos, ang madaya or mahulog sa mapandayang katuruan. If we profess to be believers and we know nothing about gospel holiness, then malinaw na kailangan namin ang kaligtasan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo dahil hindi pa kami ligtas. Aming mga anak na lumalaki dito sa church at inakala nila that they are better than other children because they are exposed to the preaching of the Word of God. Oh, Father, let them see themselves in the light of your Word in the description of a true believer in the light of your word. It is not an easy way. It is not a broad way. It is a difficult way. We have to deny ourselves. 
Take up our cross daily and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Salamat po, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming samo at dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.